place, and, and Secretary Santiago chose this place because it's special. It's special. You know, 250 years ago, the whole American experiment, our American democracy, our country, was born here. That's the reality. recognize General Keefe, uh, Secretary Reedy for their leadership on our team, uh, and we have others uh, among us from our administration, our Secretary of Veterans Services and U.S. Army Reserve Major John Santiago. I was so proud. <laughs> the first governor to have the opportunity to appoint a cabinet level secretary of veterans services. And we, we got a very special person. He's, uh, he's worked so hard to reach out to veterans service members, veterans organizations across the state, bringing forward to me and to our team, you know, the firsthand accounts of what life is like and what needs to happen. And uh, I really appreciate everything that Secretary Santiago and his team have done, uh, from housing to healthcare to education to job training. We also um, are joined today by our Deputy Secretary, Andrea Gail Bennett, and we thank you, Deputy Secretary. Who together with the rest of the team at DVS have been uh, after it at hard and you know I'm just so pleased to be able to, to be here today to uh, sign to sign the HERO Act you know um, there's a lot about our democracy and a lot said about our democracy right these days and some have a dim view but I believe deeply in our democracy I believe in our Constitution I believe in the authority and the power of the judiciary and the executive branch and the legislative branch. I believe it can work for people, provided we give voice to people. And that's what happened through this legislation. And this represents a really, really big deal. And it happens because we have, in our administration, the opportunity to work with champions in our legislature who are out there every day representing constituents across this state. And in particular, I want to thank our chairs of the Veterans Committee, Senator John Velas and Representative Jerry Cassidy. We have 
have uh, another champion in the legislature who also happens to be a gold star dad, and Representative Steve Zaros. He's with us today. <laughs> And committee members from as far away as Holyoke. Awesome. Representative Pat Duddy, Duffy, Representative Kelly Pease, um, and of course, Representative joining us as well, Margaret Scarsdale, and Lexington's own Representative Michelle Ciccolo. Thank you. I think most of all, all of us would want to recognize our veterans and our veterans organizations. Um, you guys are awesome for everything, not only that you did to help build this legislation, but for what you do every single day. Army veterans, Navy veterans, Marine veterans, Air Force veterans, Coast Guard veterans, Space Force veterans. <laughs> There's some among us, right? I don't know where they're coming. Oh, Senator Lydia Edwards is here as well. Also. Also National Guard, and Representative Adam Scanlon. It's great. So many friends in the legislature and leaders. Um, we have veterans who lead service organizations. Where's our VFW? Yes. We love you guys. The DAV. We have so many from the DAV here. Awesome. The American Legion. Our veterans of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and the global war on terrorism. Veterans who are first responders, police, firefighters, EMTs, veteran service officers, veterans who serve their fellow veterans in our Executive Office of Veteran Services in local government and in our federal agencies. Veterans who provide shelter and housing. Veterans from our rural towns and city neighborhoods. Women veterans, LGBTQ veterans. Women, uh, veterans who show us why diversity truly is our strength. We've got veterans today, and I'm really proud about this because we've been through this the last few years, and I'm really proud of the work that's been done and where we're at. Where are our veterans from Chelsea and Holyoke in the soldiers' homes? That's great. You. We were with you when the, the, we, the shovels, remember? We were, we were throwing dirt in the air everywhere, right? I know we did. That's why we, Dr. John, we love Dr. John. Okay. Um, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over in, in just a moment here to, to Dr. John, uh, Secretary Santiago. But, you know, I just want to say um, that this is a historic action. It's a big deal. And, you know, as governor, I don't think I could be more proud than to be able to, to sign uh, something like this today that so many people have, have made possible. Um, we're here to say thank you, not just in our words. Words matter, but, you know, actions are really what matter. And actions are really how you measure the worth of a man or a woman, right? And so that's what today represents. The HERO Act, which is for honoring, empowering, and recognizing our service members and veterans. The HERO Act. The most comprehensive veterans legislation to come out of the state ever, probably. And it is the result, as always, of veteran leadership. So again, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, Senator John Cronin, I appreciate you. Rep. Joe McGonigal um, joining us as well. I know others will be joining us along the way. We have a lot of friends from our labor community here as well. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details. I'm going to leave that to, to Secretary Santiago. But I will tell you this. I am really proud of the fact not only did he start and come in and make changes and make promises to Chelsea and Holyoke, that's happening. We're doing that. Together with the legislature, thank you. We've increased funding for veteran services by 11%. 11% out of the gate. 
historic levels of funding for Chelsea and Holyoke, a combined $87 million in additional federal funding that we went after, and lots and lots of good things. So um, I think it's appropriate, you know, as we, uh, as we stand here today, not far from, from the battleground, that we have the opportunity to enshrine into law forever that Massachusetts, our great commonwealth and our great people, are always and will be behind our military veterans, service members, and their families. And now I'm really proud to bring up Secretary John Santiago. I skipped a step. Thank you, Governor. Uh, it's so good to be here with each and every one of you. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, the crosswalks from my, <laughs> two months into my office, you got you some crosswalks, Phil. I'm, the best thing I ever did the first two months in office. But thank you, Jim, for inviting us to this beautiful venue here today. It's great to be with you all. I have to tell you that it's so great to be celebrating such an amazing achievement. And to be quite honest with you, I'm just filled with a tremendous amount of gratitude for what we've been able to accomplish together. Nothing about today could have been done without the inspiration and support from so many of you here. And this is no accident. You don't come up with the most comprehensive piece of veterans legislation in our state's history by just waiting around. It happened because of you and you and everyone here today and their commitment to engage and work together. And I want to let you all know that these were your ideas. These were your solutions. And now this is your HERO Act. And there are just so many people to thank, but I want to name just a couple of folks because they really speak to the heart of the HERO Act. I'm grateful for people like Holly Shea, a gold star mother who tragically lost her son Jordan in Iraq. About a year ago, I had a chance to go to Amesbury and give some remarks at an elementary school that was named after Jordan. Before that, I spent my night reading about Jordan and his journal that he kept while he was in Iraq. I spent the whole night reading it. The next day, I had a chance to visit with Holly and learn about Jordan and about her mission to support veterans all across the Commonwealth. And it struck me, and I couldn't get out of my mind, just how important it is to support, remember, and honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And then I learned that we had an increase touched the annuity benefit that we offer our Gold Star families in, over 20, in about 20 years. But guess what, folks? That's fixed with the HERO Act. I'm thankful to veterans like Amanda Braga Tipton, who shared with me the story of her brother, Josh Tipton, an Army veteran who was facing his own inner demons and, and tragically took his own life. I sat down with Amanda, got to chat with her about her brother and her passion for serving the military. And she taught me that we need to be doing more to support our veterans when it comes to mental health services. And unbeknownst to me, we have a program called Chapter 115 that actually prohibits veterans from receiving mental health services. But guess what? That changes with the HERO Act. And there are veterans like Paul Jakes, who's up here on stage with us, a firefighter from Attleboro, who told me that when his, first, when his fellow first responders finished their military service and made a decision to become a firefighter, they could not buy back their military time and take advantage of a retirement benefit that they earned. Why? Because it wasn't accessible, it was too bureaucratic. But guess what? That changes with the HERO Act. Now, this governor is about to sign the most comprehensive veterans legislative bill in the history of our Commonwealth. There are over 30 policies impacting just about every sector when it comes to the veteran experience. And it also goes the extra mile in recognizing and honoring the sacrifice of our veterans and their families. And none of this, none of this could have been done without the support of Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll.
you might ask why is that? It's because they understand and they respect our military community. Governor Healy was actually born in a naval hospital. Lieutenant Governor Driscoll is our favorite Navy brat in the administration. <laughs> so believe me when I tell you that they have heard your stories, they've shared your experiences, and as a result, they have stood up the most pro-veteran administration that we've ever had in the history of the Commonwealth. And, and let me tell you why. It's because of them, as the governor said, we've been able to stand up the first ever secretariat of veteran services. It's because of them that we secured federal funding to build a brand new $500 million facility at the Holyoke Veterans Home. And not to mention, we just completed the construction at the Chelsea Veterans Home, and folks just moved in last year. And let me say, it's hot off the press that both those homes are now licensed by the Department of Public Health, something that people thought was unimaginable, impossible after COVID-19. It's because of Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll that we've invested $20 million to end veteran homelessness, the largest dedicated amount on that issue in the history of the Commonwealth. We are engaging more veterans than ever before. We are spending more state dollars to support our veterans. And the crazy thing about this all is that we've been in office, the Executive Office of Veteran Services, for less than a year and a half. <laughs> Governor, thank you so much for and trusting me to lead this effort to build out this new secretary and for really realizing your vision when it comes to veteran services. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a minute to thank my legislative colleagues. You see, Beacon Hill is the ultimate team game. I had the, the pleasure and the honor to serve there for a number of years. And although I served and I'm a veteran as well, I learned on Beacon Hill how to advocate for folks. And through this past year, working with our colleagues there, particularly Senator John Velas and Representative Cassidy, I learned how to best advocate for our veteran communities. It's because of them, it's because of leadership, like Senate President Karen Spilka, Speaker Mariano, that we got this bill done. And so I'm thankful for their work day in, day out. I'm thankful for my colleague, Rep X, Rep X Zaros. As the governor said, The representative's son tragically died in Afghanistan, but I want to let you know Nick is a part of this bill. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> to Senator Barrett, Senator Edwards, Senator Cronin, Representative Socolo, Scanlon, Scarzel, Duffy, McGonagall, thank you for everything that you do and your support for veterans on, on day one of the administration. I want to simply end by just thanking a special group of folks out there that really mean a whole lot to me. Anyone in government knows the importance of staff, right? Yep. Yeah. We can't do anything without them, right? I have challenged you, I have pushed you from day one, and you've risen to the occasion each and every single time. So as we embarked on this journey a little less than a, a year and a half ago, you stood by me, you've You've hung out with me early in the morning, late evenings to get the job done. So if you could all just stand up. If you work for the Executive Office of Veteran Services, please stand up. I just want to formally recognize you in front of everybody. <laughs> thank you to our staff. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you for each and every one of you who are here who played a role in this bill. And I, like to bring up my good fellow veteran, my friend, my brother, John Velas. Good afternoon, everybody. What a beautiful, beautiful sight in Lexington, birthplace of this country, surrounded by a bunch of veterans, family, friends. You can't beat that anywhere in America today. God bless. <clears throat> So I, I just, just briefly on the Senate side, before I speak, I just want to say, because I'm going to ask one to stand up here in a second, Senator Cronin, two tours in Afghanistan, Army Captain, a retired, Lydia Edwards, First Lieutenant Edwards, who this coming Sunday 
is going to be leaving for the equivalent of her basic training. Stand up, Lydia. And, and make no mistake about it, the two folks that I just mentioned, Senator Cronin and Senator Edwards, a big part of this bill, their legislation reflected in this. So thank you both for that. You know, a lot of people don't know this, and I've said it before, but when the governor got sworn into office, that actual swearing in in January of 2023, and this is what a lot of people don't know, if you listen to that speech, the first thing she mentioned was veterans. First thing out of her mouth was veterans. Now, I think it's easy, right? Veterans are one of the easiest topics to say, we're all behind, we're all with them, right? Who's not? So there's a difference between words and deeds, words and actions. No sooner had the governor said that than they filed this bill, the HERO Act. So thank you for your actions, not your words, Governor Healy. <laughs> what I find to be so great about this bill, right? You don't have to look that hard and look at the news to find all the bad stuff going on today, how government doesn't work. But let me tell you about this bill in particular. The governor filed it. The House acted on it, made it better, added improvements, sent it over to us in the Senate, and we made improvements and acted on it. Collaboration with all three branches of government. Who thinks that Washington could probably learn from us a little bit? I do. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real, real simple. I'm not going to get into all of the, the bills, the specifics of it. The good Dr. John already did that a lot. I love that, by the way. Dr. John, that's forever your name. <laughs> and speaking of the good Dr. John, this past week, right, when we were in the final stages of the legislation, the whole July 31st, all that stuff, I want to give Dr. John a big shout out because the number of times that I talked to him on the phone, text message, everything, just really, really advocating for this bill. So Dr. John, Chair Cassidy, certainly Majority Leader Moran and all the other elected officials, but Dr. John, it was a pleasure doing this with you, having all these conversations. So again, thank you so very much. <laughs> And then, and, then, and then I'm just going to finish up, I, I guess, by saying lastly, right, aren't we blessed? Aren't we blessed in these fine United States of America? But I think it's really, really important to constantly remind ourselves, and what better place to remind ourselves than in Lexington? Every single thing that we take for granted in these fine United States of America, in this commonwealth, is because as of the men and women, whether you were drafted, whether you volunteered, but every single thing we take for granted because, is because of the blood, the sweat, and the tears of our service members. Period. End of story. Absolutely end of story. And one of the things that we cannot rest on our laurels, it has frequently been said that Massachusetts passes more legislation than any other state in the veteran space. We are constantly passing legislation, and that's a beautiful thing. The other day, back in my district, when someone heard about this and what we were doing here, they said, when are you guys gonna stop passing veterans legislation? <laughs> I said, you, you, you're asking me that question, really? <laughs> Never. Never. How can we? And here's why we can't, because we need to ensure that young men, young women, all throughout this commonwealth, when they go to sign, when they're contemplating going to sign, they need to know. They need to know beyond a shadow of doubt with absolute certainty that their elected officials have their back. Because at <laughs> because what we know, what we have learned through a lot of pain, that in many instances, the real challenges, the real pain begins when that service member comes home. That's what we know, and that's one of the most beautiful things about this bill. Let's talk about the last 12 years, the Valor Act, the Speed Act, and here, the Harrow Act. What a great day to be here in Lexington. What a great day 
to be celebrating our veterans. And what a great day, and I promise you I'm going to finish with this. Every single person that has served their country and raised their hand to serve their country knows that it's not just you going. It is your family members, moms and dads. I have my mom and dads here today, brothers and sisters, grandmother, grandfather, son, daughter. The entire family goes with you. So when we talk about advocacy of the veterans, it is also the veterans' family members because when you sign up, everyone goes, God bless you, and thank you, everyone, very much. You know this better than anybody. I have a, I, I have an, yeah, as do you, yes. I always forget to introduce the next speaker when I'm tasked to do it. I have the distinct honor and privilege. Before I do that, Gabe and Caitlin from my team, you know, people forget, people forget, and it's, I think the secretary said it, people forget the role of staff in this job. But anybody who's been involved in this line of work knows that if you take away staff, not much is getting done. So thank you very much. So, yeah, for sure on that one. My, I have the distinct honor and privilege of introducing my battle buddy on the House side, the House Chair of the Veterans and Federal Affairs Committee, Jerry Cassidy. Thank you. I, I thought the Senator was just forgetting about the House. That's all right. <laughs> um, 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 Secretary Santiago, uh, I'm glad we're signing this bill now because uh, I can actually block your number. He calls, he calls, me, he calls me every single day, and it's a, uh, it's a pleasure, ple pleasure to be here, but uh, you do a phenomenal work. Governor, thank you very much. Um, today is a great Great day for the Commonwealth of uh, Massachusetts. Our veterans embody courage, sacrifice, and an unwavering commitment to our country. So it is our duty to ensure that they receive the respect, support, and quality of life they so truly deserve. The beauty of this bill is that it makes several seemingly small but impactful changes. We are honoring our veterans by increasing the disabled veteran annuity creating a commission to continually assess how to, how to provide the best services to our veterans and broadening the definition of a veteran so that more veterans qualify for benefits. We are empowering our veterans by creating an EMT waiver for quali qualified veteran medics, encouraging businesses to hire veterans by increasing the tax credit for hiring low-income veterans and by making sure our veterans are aware of the services available to them, mandated uh, benefits, posters, uh, places. This bill recognizes our veterans, creating several rec recognition days, uh, directing flags in the Commonwealth to be half staff in the event of death of a service member and illuminating bridges and landmarks in the, state of, uh, in the state for Gold Memorial Day. I won't tell you everything that's in this bill, but this is a, a wonderful uh, day for the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, I cannot uh, uh, go on and say my chief of staff, Bridget Plouffe, she was the one who got this over the, uh, over the line, along with uh, uh, Senator uh, 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 Leader Moran. If you ask anything about any, any part of this bill, Bridget Plouffe, my chief of staff, knows exactly when, w what it is. The other day, she, uh, Joe McGonagall said, uh, Jerry, I need the 46 aid pass. I looked at her, and she says, oh, that's, that's the uh, poster award. So Bridget Plouffe, thank you very much. And my other uh, aide, uh, Grace. But this, this is truly, truly, a, it's a veterans bill that we need to do. And I thank the, uh, the governor very much. And I'd like to introduce Michael Belila, the adjunct of the Disabled American Veterans. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank uh, Governor Healy, Secretary, Secretary Santiago, um, Senator Vellis, Rep Representative Cassidy, and, and so many other of our legislators that are here amongst our uh, crowd and have assisted getting this bill to where it is today. 
I come here representing the DAV Department of Massachusetts, Disabled American Veterans. Here in Massachusetts, we have over 23,000 uh, members of the DAV, but there are so, so many more disabled veterans in our midst. An Army veteran myself, when I first came home from Iraq in 2011, I had to go through some of the transition that we've uh, heard our, our other speakers talk about today. Um, I came home, I was looking for housing. I went into a transitional housing program. From there, I was able to get my education, uh, get myself back up on my feet, purchase my first home. Um, luckily, I was able to find a, a great job locally. From there, I started serving my fellow veteran as my way to keep serving once home, like so many of us in this crowd still do to this day. Uh, through our different organizations and, and avenues that we work through. I found my way into DAV um, about 10 years ago, and from there I became a national service officer, helping veterans with claims and benefits. Um, I then came into this role as the adjutant for the state, and I'll tell you, this piece of legislation, I can speak both personally and for the veterans that I've been serving for all these years, this is going to make a huge impact in a lot of lives of veterans here in the Commonwealth. So thank you. <laughs> With that, I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, sweet. I want to introduce Liz uh, Lizeth Velez, founder and CEO of LJV. All right, all right. Um, today's date is 8-8-2024. And I don't know about you guys, but I am one of those people that I'm with the universe, with the alignment, and it just feels so special. It feels like we are at the right time and the right place. I'm Lisette Velez, founder and CEO of LGV Development. And I founded this company as I was transitioning out of the military on way to be 100% civilian. Very daunting, <laughs> yeah. I'm also a mapper investigator, so I did just that when I started. I mapped and I investigated. I try to call the SBA, the local officials, and everybody in between to get all the resources that I needed to keep my company afloat. I was seeking knowledge. I was just seeking information wherever I can find it, because we know when you're transitioning, you're just, you're, you're trying to gather, you're doing a true reconnaissance mission. And I used those military skills that the Air Force gave me, and I put them into action. The signing of this bill means so many things, and everybody has talked about all the wonderful things this bill is going to do. I want us to focus for a second on one of the features that this bill is going to do, which is provide employers with a, with a, with a, with a, tra a tax credit, right? So that tax credit is, as an employer and as a veteran, is, is, is important, it's necessary, and it's hopefully going to incentivize more people to hire veterans. I know I don't need to convince any veteran employers, like, we get it. We know we need to hire more veterans. What about civilian employers? Do they understand the skills and all of the training that we bring to the workforce and how that helps that specific workplace? Maybe. You know, um, this doesn't happen without the leadership of an administration. So thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you, your, thank you for your administration. And on behalf of all the veterans, I want to just thank everybody that's had any peace to do with making this happen. And understand that the work is just beginning. We still need to move people to actually use these programs, right, to fill out the forms that we love to fill out. We have to take action. So we all know an employer. We all know an employee. Make sure that you're spreading the word and you're letting everybody know that this, this is a thing 
because the last thing we want to do is waste this amazing opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Lizeth. And we're now going to hear from Amanda Braga Tipton. So I was asked to come and, and share the story. I like storytelling. I always liked it, even as a kid. This story, though, is the weightiest story. It is both the most precious gift that I have, and yet it is excruciating. In my early 30s, I had this crazy idea that I would join the military. And the foundation of that was because I began hearing of a number. The number was 22, and the number really, 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 really ticked me off. And I thought, how is this happening in the United States of America? How do we have 22 veterans a day that are dying by suicide? What is this, and how can we fix it? So I went on a journey, and I decided to become a chaplain in the United States Army Reserves. A lot of counseling, a lot of spiritual guidance, a lot more counseling, a lot. And I always found it an honor to be able to listen to my soldiers, the traumas, the difficulties, all sorts of situations, sitting with Gold Star families. Whew. When you have a Gold Star family member share your pain with you, it's a whole new level. You hold that close. And so my brother simultaneously, actually before me, my little brother, 10 years and 10 months apart, I think I followed in his footsteps and our dad's. He was serving in a combat arms unit, 19 Kilo, United States Army, Sergeant Joshua Tipton. And upon exiting, he joined the reserves. He was serving in a unit out of Newport, Rhode Island owned his own home, in transition from one job to another, but no financial constraints, a beautiful daughter. Life was going well. He was a suicide prevention advocate. He was the one that his battles would call all hours of night, and he'd be there. To know Joshua was to love him. I'm really sorry that most of you here never had the chance to meet him. Because truly, he was a diamond in the rough. And so to my surprise, on 5 July 2023, I got a phone call from, from our dad. When I say sergeant, I mean sergeant. My father doesn't cry. He's that tough, men don't cry. And on the other end, I could hear his voice cracking. And I screamed a few words that I cannot repeat here from this podium. And he just said, it's not good, it's Josh. I think I threw the phone, I might have stopped breathing. I remember thinking, I don't know what to do, this can't be right. I hung up and the second person that I actually called was that man right there. He's a state representative, but he's a gold star dad. And he was the first person at my house the next morning. And so, I don't know if you've ever heard or received news that is that tragic, but I quite literally couldn't breathe. I had to find breath. And so, as the night unfolded and everything continued to swirl, there's no answers. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. What did we miss? The next day, when I arrived at my brother's house and I'm finding myself cleaning up matter, no one prepares you for that. I'm going to tell you right now, that's some crap that the army doesn't prepare you for, seminary doesn't prepare you for. You're just thrown in it in the midst of life. And I remember standing there 
as a woman of faith, really being questioned at that moment, questioning everything. But I said this, God, there has to be redemption that comes forth from this story. Because of Joshua, others have to live. So that's part of the story. Secretary Santiago, whether you're in this suit or whether you're in scrubs, I believe there's a mandate on your life, and the mandate is so that others will live. Madam Governor, I am so appreciative of what you're about to do, but I ask that this would be a comma, mm -hmm. that this would not be an end. This would be a comma. Senators, House of Representatives that are present, Madam Governor, again, you all decide what Massachusetts is known for by the decisions you make on that hill. I pray that Massachusetts carries forth a legacy, that it stands with those who have raised their right hands to protect and defend no matter the cost. If you're here and you're a veteran, got a surprise for you. Your service isn't over. Our service now is to our brothers and sisters in arms, to the right and to the left, to the front and behind, because we leave no one behind. We are here. And because of that, it's now really time to get our hands dirty, to go forward, because right now, there are 22 Joshes that are struggling in a car, in a hospital bed, in a home, at work. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a responsibility to ensure that those out there and maybe in here or up here win the war they tell no one about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, and today is for, for Josh and for Jordan and for Nick and so many, many more. Um, I'm going to go sign this, but um, I just, uh, so today is August 8th, it happens to be my grandmother's birthday and she's 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 passed but I tell you this for a reason you know growing up as a kid she used to tell us stories the story she was most proud of was the story she told often which was walking her grandfather holding her hand up to the GAR every afternoon on State Street just down the road from all you and Amesbury and Newburyport she was so proud of her grandfather, who at 16 got a permission slip from his dad to go off and fight the Civil War. I say that because one of our obligations today is to make sure we leave here, and I will tell my kids and my nieces and nephews what we did today, to tell our young people about military service, to tell our young people that no matter your politics, we are the United States of America, and we are free because of those who serve. And in Massachusetts, we will always honor them. Thank you. Thank you.